Uh, hello everybody, um, <clears throat> and welcome to my sixth tutorial of SFML Made Easy. I am now recording this on my laptop's built-in mic, so I'm not sure if it'll make a difference in the sound. So I'm testing it out, and you guys can tell me um, if this sounds better than my regular mic, and then I'll start using this from now on. Okay, so uh in this tutorial i'm just going to be teaching you about changing the colors um with the sfml shapes and um i'm gonna uh, using the rbg system sorry and then i'm going to be teaching you how to move the shapes and uh as you can see i have a lot of tabs open with a lot of different things that you don't understand um i'm just working on a game right now uh that's why i haven't made a tutorial um in a while so uh, when I release, uh, I will release like a sample version when I actually get, um, actually when I finish the title screen and when I finish like the, the gameplay with like screen scrolling and stuff, I'll just show you what it's like. But I just learned, um, some new things about classes and stuff, so I'm gonna implement this into my game. So anyways, without further ado, um, let's get into the tutorials. So let me, to the tutorial, sorry. So then let's zoom in here. Okay, so as you can see, I already have some pre-written code. Uh, hold on a second. And sorry if it sounds like I'm yelling. It's just that my mic on my built-in laptop. Um, you need to yell in order to be able to for it to hear you. So, anyways, I already have um these stuff pre-written, and I'll just show you an example of what it does. So as you can see, it probably will be laggy on the computer, but you can just see a box moving, um, right. And we I, we never learned about input yet, so then I'm not gonna be doing keyboard input to make it move. We'll be learning about that later. So as in the last tutorial, we learned about making shapes. So I made our SF shape rectangle, and I set the base corners to zero zero ten ten, right? So then it means um, x1 is 0, y1 is 0, x2 is 10, and y2 is 10, and I set the color to red. And I'll teach you about using the colors in the RGB system. So then, right now, we're learning a new function um, called move. And all you have to do is put the shape's name, so I named it rect, and you put the shape's name dot move. And right here is the x position and the y position. And basically, it says how much you want to move it. Now, SFML mainly uses floats, so then that's why I have the 1.0, and this really should be um 0.0. And um, so this is basically saying that I will move like one unit to the right every single time it loops. And then we already know about the window draw to draw to the screen, and then this is this to display the window. And then we have SF sleep, and I'm not talking about this, but um, even if I did, I'll explain it again. Um, it rests the program for a little while, and if you use Allegro, it's just like rest in Allegro. It rests the program, but um, in other programs like Allegro, you would put like rest 60. No, you put like rest 100 or something, and that would rest um for a tenth of a second. Um, in other lang like in other languages, 1,000 um 1,000 milliseconds would equal a second. In SFML, they use um the float system. So um if you wanna pause the program for a second, then you'd put one. Po I mean for a tenth of a second, sorry, you'd put 0 0.1. And if you want to pause it for a second, you would just put 1.0. So you just have to use like the decimal system. It takes a while to get used to. So I'm just gonna be um sleeping for this amount, and then once you display to the screen, uh, like I showed you earlier, you get the same result of it moving in the right direction. And if you wanted it to move in the left direction, then you would just put negative in front of the number, so you put negative one. And then same for the y coordinates also. So now that's basically it for moving but regularly I do not use the move function mainly what I do now um is that when it moves I just um do the set um position and then I just reset the position of the shape and I'll get more in depth into that later 
but then when it moves there's no way to track the x and y coordinates because you don't have variables to track the coordinates so then there's an easy way to do that so let me create two float types not integers um, let's name it float x and let's make a float y and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the shapes name dot get position sorry position and the opening closing brackets dot x so that's getting the x position and then uh let me put x is equal to sorry and right here I'll put y is equal to rect dot get position sorry I'm in an awkward position right now so it's kinda hard to type so and that just gets the x and y position so if you need to check collision or something then this will display the current x and y position and just to show you I will use CO to display them so I'll put sorry I'll put quotation marks for this so one thing I don't like about code blocks I rather use uh the Visual Studio but I'll live with this and and like when we run our program let's see how it works right now so just wait for it to compile okay so we see it we see it moving right and if we check right here you see the X position um, it's changing by one unit every single time right and um, if I exit the window you see uh, oh my bad well you you would have seen everything so if I uh, comment this out run this again uh, it's linking right now so if we look at this file we just see the x coordinate continues to change and that's how you move it now let's go into changing the color of the sprite using the um the of the rectangle or shape using the RGB color um scale. So you would delete the the red that you have there, and you just put SF color and you'd put opening and closing brackets. Now how the RBG RBG color system R G R G B sorry. Yeah, um, color system is that um, it takes um different colors from those three main colors from red, green, and blue. That's what RGB stands for, and then um, it blends them together to make the color that you want. And um, I'll show you how to do this right now. Okay, so uh, all we have to do is put um certain. Um, the max number you can put is 255 just so you know so I want to put 255 00 so the first one in the bracket stands for red and then the second one's for green and the third one's for blue right and the higher the number is the more intense the color is so since 255 is the highest number it's going to be 255 of red 0 of green and 0 of blue right and therefore the shape is going to be fully red So let me just, uh, it's just compiling right now. And as you can see, we got a bright red shape. Now, uh, let's try different colors. So let me put this to zero. And let me put 255 of blue. So as you can see, we got a blue rectangle. And again, so let's do some color blending. So let me put 255 of red and 255 of blue, which should give magenta, which is the transparent color in the in Allegro. So as you can see, a magenta, and so on and so forth. So you can mix them, and you can see different combinations you can do on the internet and stuff to make shape certain colors, right? And the RBG system is better because you can make weird or different colors than the traditional colors. So this is all for this tutorial. Hope you enjoyed and more in the next tutorial. Thanks for watching and bye.